today I want to talk about Donald Trump and um, what I want to talk to you about is how Donald Trump has said on record so many times that he's not racist but he's talking about on at one of his rallies he's saying um, racism is evil and um, I really do trust Donald Trump. I don't think that he's an evil man. I don't think that he's racist at all, but I just wanted to share with you one of his most recent um, rallies so you can see that he says that he's not, he's, you know, he doesn't come out and say that he's not racist, but he says racism is evil. And I, I just want to clear the air. I'm just so sick of everybody thinking that Donald Trump is a hardcore racist. He's not. He's, I, I would never support a hardcore racist, but um, I, it's just things are being blown out of proportion. The man constantly has to defend himself, constantly has to say racism is bad, and he's on record saying racism is evil. This is his most recent rally, so I'm I'm not going to talk too much more about it. I just want you to see the clip, and I want you to leave a comment down below. Um, about what you think about the rally now um, if you're interested in my skin bleaching videos I still bleach my skin you need to look it up under lion puss skincare um, it will be under my featured videos uh, I mean my featured channels it'll say lion puss skincare go there for all my skin bleaching videos um, if you want to just see me being silly and random um, the channel is the goddess fifi 8 and to check out my daughter's channel Anastasia Katarina it's all under the, over at the featured channels so um, go ahead and watch the next clip. It's just Donald Trump talking about racism. So um, let me know how you feel in the comment section. Good evening. What a difference a day makes. Well, a day, a speechwriter, and a teleprompter. President Trump today speaking to veterans in Reno, reading from prepared remarks on a teleprompter calling for national unity. It is time to heal the wounds that divide us and to seek a new unity based on the common values that unite us. Heal the wounds, seek a new unity, common values that unite us. Normally strong words that few would take issue with, except when these words are coming from the mouth of President Trump, many Americans now wonder what, if anything, do they really mean? Just last night, the president stood before a crowd of supporters in Phoenix and revealed once again just how far he'll go, how much he'll bend the truth, whose memory he'll sully, who he'll attack, even within his own party. Sometimes he does this to try to cover up the fact that he made a mistake, which, as we all know, he never owns up to. Sometimes he does it because he clearly thinks of himself as a victim, a victim of Republicans, reporters, leaking staffers, Democrats, and just about everyone else. Donald Trump, the world's biggest victim, trapped inside the body of the world's most powerful man. And perhaps sometimes he does it because this is what he has done his entire life. Maybe it was entertaining in New York when he was a brash real estate developer, exaggerating his wealth, pretending to be other people, calling up tabloid reporters to brag about his prowess with the ladies. But now he's president of the United States. And while many in that auditorium in Phoenix may have enjoyed his riffs, if you believe the latest polls, many others in this country sure seem to believe that act is wearing thin. We want to take a few minutes tonight just to go through some of the things the president claimed last night, which were misstatements of fact, or let's be real, outright lies. Last night, the president was supposed to talk about his accomplishments and his agenda, but it became a 77-minute airing of grievances in which the president again went out of his way to make himself the victim in the tragedy of Charlottesville, a tragedy that had many real victims, including Heather Heyer, just 32 years old, struck and killed by a driver on authorities say a mission of murder. Last night, the president mentioned uh, Heather's first name in passing, but spent most of his time on Charlottesville trying to repeat and rewrite what he said and didn't say immediately after the fact. I'm really doing this to show you how damn dishonest these people are. So here is my first statement when I heard about Charlottesville. And I have a home in Charlottesville. A lot of people don't know. Here's the first. Can't believe they haven't figured that one out yet. Now they know. Now they finally know. But I, I just, I don't want to bore you with this. But I, it shows you how dishonest they are. And most of you know this anyway. So here's what I said really fast. Here's what I said on Saturday. We're closely following the terrible events unfolding in Charlottesville, Virginia. This is me speaking. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. That's me speaking on Saturday. Right after the event. 
All right, so let's just focus on that for a moment because the president is right there attempting, right there, he's attempting to rewrite history. He's attempting to recraft what he actually said. Yeah, he did speak those words on Saturday after the tragedy, that's true. But he left out the end of that last sentence and the next sentence. This is the sentence the president actually spoke on Saturday, the day Heather Heyer was killed. We condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. On many sides. On many sides. That is the controversial part. That's the part, by the way, he ad-libbed on Saturday. That's the part in which he equated neo-Nazis and Klansmen with the people who turned out to protest them. By leaving those words out last night in Phoenix, the president lied by omission. Also last night, in all the time that he devoted to his comments about Charlottesville and how terrific they were, he made no mention that on Tuesday, after the tragedy, he praised, and I quote, very fine people on both sides. He didn't mention that last night. He said there were people quietly protesting the idea of removing a statue of Robert E. Lee in a torchlit march in Charlottesville on Friday night. What's so stunning about those remarks, about very fine people being in that torchlit march, is that it was a well-organized march by neo-Nazis, white supremacists and white nationalists, and they were chanting Nazi slogans and anti-Jewish slogans, and it's on tape. Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Do you think if those were Muslims chanting Jews will not replace us, the president would have spoken about very fine people in their midst? We spoke with the vice, the vice correspondent who was with those Nazi marchers throughout the evening about the people she saw Friday night. And when the president says that there were good people at this march, that they were quietly there to protest uh, a removal of the Robert E. Lee statue, that not all of them were neo-Nazis or white supremacists, what did you think? Is that true? No. Everyone who was there knew what they were doing. They were shouting, Jews will not replace us. It was very well coordinated. They had an order to the chance. Like, there was no mistaking. There's no innocent person wandering up and accidentally getting involved in this. Well, last night, the president did not mention his belief that some of those men were very fine people. Another lie by omission. Last night, the president did, however, lash out at the press coverage, and no surprise, he wasn't honest about that either. Listen. Then I said... Racism is evil. Did they report that I said that racism is evil? You know why? Because they are very dishonest people. So I said, racism is evil. Now, they only choose, you know, like a half a sentence here or there, and then they just go on this long rampage, or they put on these real lightweights all around a table that nobody ever heard of, and they all say, what a bad guy I am. Okay, so he's talking about his prepared statement read off a teleprompter on Monday of last week. And again, he's not being honest. Let's just take a look at how we and just about every other news outlet covered it live. Racism is evil. And those who cause violence in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. So again, the president claimed it didn't get coverage, and the crowd in Phoenix appeared to believe him. Sad. The president even lied last night about the coverage last night. Look back there. The live red lights, they're turning those suckers off fast. I'll tell you. They're turning those lights off fast. Like CNN, CNN does not want its falling viewership to watch what I'm saying tonight, I can tell. Oh boy, those cameras are going off, oh wow. Why don't you just fold them up and take them home? Oh, those cameras are going off. Wow. That's the one thing, they're very nervous to have me on live television, because this can't happen. Is he talking about his staffers there? You know what that is? That is the sound of the president lying again. In fact, we and others kept the cameras going for each and every one of those 77 minutes that he spoke, including every last attack on the people broadcasting it. And yet, the president watches us.
Continuous coverage of every single moment of the president's remarks. He lied, too, about his own record or exaggerated his accomplishments about things both big and small. We've also obtained historic increase in defense spending to prevent and deter conflict. We believe in peace through strength. We're building up our military like never before. Like never before. The president, by the way, has asked for a $54 billion boost in military spending for the next fiscal year, which is big, but it's smaller on a percentage basis than 10 other defense budgets, according to PolitiFact. In any event, Congress has yet to either raise spending caps or actually appropriate the money. Asking is one thing, getting it is another. He also turned down a chance to take any responsibility for the GOP health care bill, uh, bill uh, not passing in the Senate. Now, without naming names, he repeatedly referenced the senator whose vote sealed its fate, Arizona's John McCain, who, of course, happens to be undergoing radiation and chemotherapy these days for brain cancer. Oh, and for good measure, the president also slammed, not by name, Arizona's junior Republican senator, Jeff Flake. One vote away. One, one vote. One vote away. We were one vote away. Think of it. Seven years, the Republicans, and again, you have some great senators, but we are one vote away from repeal it. But you know, they all said, Mr. President, your speech was so good last night. Please, please, Mr. President, don't mention any names. So I won't. I won't. No, I won't vote. One vote away, I will not mention any names. Very presidential, isn't it? Very presidential. And nobody wants me to talk about your other senator, who's weak on borders, weak on crime. So I won't talk about him. Stay in classy, Mr. President. That promise, by the way, didn't last long. Just a few hours later, the president tweeted about him. He was asked not to use the event to announce a pardon of former local Sheriff Joe Arpaio, who was convicted of criminal contempt for disregarding a court order in a racial profiling case. Sarah Huckabee Sanders, the president's spokesperson, said there would be no pardon announced in Phoenix. The president was warned that given the controversy surrounding Arpaio, announcing a pardon would be like striking a match in a powder keg. But warnings are not, potential consequences are not, the president would not be deterred. By the way, I'm just curious, do the people in this room like Sheriff Joe? So, was Sheriff Joe convicted for...